In associative mapping we have seen we can map any main memory block to any cache line. But in direct mapping each main memory block can be mapped to one particular cache line. Thus the first block will be mapped to the first cache line. That is if we keep the main memory block 0 in the cache then it should be kept on cache line 0 itself. Similarly, block 1 will be mapped to line 1, block 2 will be mapped to line 2 and so on. Now the cache lines are over, hence we will wrap around. The next main memory block will be mapped to again the first cache line. Thus block 4 is mapped to line 0, block 5 is mapped to line 1, block 6 is mapped to line 2 and so on. Thus more than one main memory blocks are mapped to each cache line. Hence, suppose we need to bring main memory block 4 to the cache and while bringing it we find that this line is already occupied with main memory block 0 then we should replace it and use the same line 0 itself even if any other cache lines are free we cannot use it. Thus we can see every main memory block such that the block number or the block index modulus number of cache lines is 0 then such blocks are mapped to the cache line 0. If the block number modulus number of cache lines is 1 then such blocks are mapped to cache line 1. And the block number such that the block index modulus number of cache lines is 3, such cache lines are mapped to cache line 3. Thus in general we can say, if the number of cache lines is n, then main memory block j is mapped to cache line i if j modulus n equals i. Otherwise, in binary terms, since here we have 8 blocks to, to, to the power 3 blocks, hence 3 bits are required to represent each main memory block. And here there are 4 cache lines, thus 2 bits are required to represent each cache line. Now, if we observe, we can see every block or every block index whose least significant bits matches with the cache line are mapped to that corresponding cache line. Here for block 0 and block 4, the least significant two bits are 0, 0, hence they are mapped to the cache line 0, 0. And for block 1 and block 5, the least significant bits are 0, 1, which matches with this cache line. They are mapped to this cache line and so on. Thus in general we can say a block index whose least significant bits matches with a particular cache line are mapped to that corresponding cache line. Hence this is a many to one mapping to one cache line more than one main memory blocks are mapped. But at a time each cache line can occupy only one main memory block. So if one cache line is occupied among this more than one blocks mapped to it, which main memory block is actually residing on it? Here if cache line 0, 0 is occupied then it, there are two chances. It can be either main memory block 0 or main memory block 4. So among these which block is actually residing on this cache on this cache line. To identify that we use the remaining bits. The remaining bits will be attached as a tag to that cache line. Here the tag is 1. It means it is block 4 which is residing on cache line 00. So suppose we need to bring block 2 of main memory to the cache. Block 2 block index is 0, 1, 0 and the least significant bits are 1, 0 which matches with this cache line. Thus block 2 should be kept on this cache line. And the remaining bits here there is one bit remaining that bit will be attached as a tag to the cache line. Now suppose we need to bring main memory block 7 to the cache. The least significant bits of the block index is 1 1 which matches with this cache line. Hence we should copy block 7 to this cache line. 
and the remaining bits we have one bit remaining one which will be copied as a tag to this cache line now by analyzing this tags along with the cache lines we will be able to identify which main memory block is residing on that cache line here the cache line 0 is occupied and here the tag is 1 the line is 0 0 it means main memory block is 1 0 0 which is block 4 and the cache line 1 is free and cache line 2 is occupied the tag is 0 and the line is 1 0 thus the main memory block is 0 1 0 block 2 and the next line is also occupied its tag is 1 the line number is 1 1 and thus the main memory block is 1 1 1 which is block 7 thus from CPU point of view how does it actually work as we know when a physical address is generated this physical address will be referring to the main memory here in the main memory we have eight blocks assume that each block is having four words as in previous example so to address each word of the block we need two bits to address each block we need three bits hence there will be five bits in the physical address we can divide it into two parts block offset and block index since we have four words in each block, block offset will be having two bits. Since we have eight blocks, the remaining will be three bits. Since we are using direct mapping, the least significant bits of the block index will decide the cache line to which it is mapped. Here the least significant bits are 1, 0 which matches with this cache line. Hence it means the block containing the word. If the block containing the word addressed by this physical address is residing on the cache, then it will be on this cache line itself. So we need to check. Go and check just this cache line. No need to check any other cache line. And after reaching this cache line, we should compare the tag. If the tag also matches, then it's sure that our required block is residing on this cache line. Here there is a match, thus our block is residing on this cache line. We can access the word, word 1 from this block. Now suppose if a match doesn't occur, let this be the generated physical address. We can split it into two parts, block index and the block offset. In the block index, the least significant bits match with the cache line number 11. If the block containing the word address by this physical address, if it is residing on the cache, then it will be on the cache line number 11 itself. Hence directly go and check the cache line 11. Now compare the tag, but the tag doesn't match it means our required block is not residing on the cache so this time we should go to the main memory and access it from the main memory thus access word 0 of block 0 1 1 word 0 of block 3 from the main memory for the time being and then for future references, we should bring or copy this block to the cache memory and the block 3 block index is 0, 1, 1 and the least significant bits 1, 1 matches with this cache line. Hence, block 3 should be copied to this cache line and then the tag should be replaced. Now the tag is 0 which means the block 0 1 1 block 3 is the block which is residing on the cache memory on this cache line. So what are the advantages of this method? Compared to associative mapping, this method is simple. We can easily find out the cache line number where the block will be residing because each main memory block is mapped to just one cache line. We can directly check that corresponding cache line. No need of many comparisons required as in associative mapping. Also compared to associative mapping, the number of bits required for the tag is less. In associative mapping, the entire block index is used as the tag. Here, the number of bits required for the tag is reduced. Anyway, this is not much flexible method compared to associative mapping. For example, suppose we need to bring block 0 to the cache memory. The block 0 is mapped to this cache line which is already occupied and here we have a free cache line. Even then we are not able to use that cache line. We should replace the block on cache line 0 and use that cache line. 
Hence, even if many cash lines are available as free, even then we may need to replace. A replacement may be required. But in associative mapping, a re replacement is required only if the entire cache memory is full.